a vote. So this is the um, uh, October, November already? November. Oh, Vera. Christine, we're halfway through November. <laughs> oh my God. This is, I can't stand it. I'm totally losing sense of time here. Uh, yeah, so November meeting of the uh, Community Board for Manhattan Community Board for Transportation Committee. And, um, you know, we, you are all on uh, Zoom because we still have to do Zoom per the uh, guidelines from the governor. And um, so if you want to talk or if you want to raise your hand, you can do that in the raise my hand panel, which is when you go to the participants and the attendees. Can the attendees raise their hand? Um, yes, they can. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So you raise your hand and we will call you when it's appropriate. Uh, for those people who are on the phone, uh, if you um, do the number uh, asterisk six, you will be able to toggle mute and unmute. And when you do asterisk nine, it will raise your hand. And uh, generally, we are going to ask everybody to be on mute as much as possible so that there is no interference in the sound. So the way we run the meeting is we have an agenda. We are uh, calling the, uh, pres the people who want to present on the agenda. And then we have a question and answers from the committee. And then we uh, open it to the public. And then we regroup with the committee to make a recommendation. And again, we are not making decision, we are making recommendation. The recommendation go to the board. The board uh, vote on it at its next full board committee, which is early uh, December, the first Wednesday in December. And that's the way uh, the process works. So we, and if you have any new business, we will call the new business at the end. So uh, without further delay, since we have a, a quorum, we want to invite uh, the, <clears throat> revocable co consent, the applicant for the revocable consent for a stoop and proposed stair to the basement with guardrail and gate at 278 West 25th Street. And so if, uh, yes. Hi. Yeah, if Janine, okay. if you can show that, and if you want to start okay. presenting, maybe we'll try to hold our question to the end, but it's always very difficult. <laughs> okay. Especially Thank you so much. Um, my name is, oh, can you hear me? Yes, very okay. well. Thank you. My name is Julie Torres Moskowitz. I worked with Janine. Thank you for helping me with the slides. And Thank you all um, for letting us be here tonight. So I wanted to talk briefly, walk you through these public design commission um, draft because we're, we're supposed to submit on Thursday to them. And we've been working back and forth with public design commission as well as the DOT, the MTA and DOB, lots of entities. And so uh, these drawings that, you're, that I'm gonna take you through right now are the Public Design Commission presentation. At the back end of it is the DOT drawings. They're, they're similar, but I thought you would like these drawings today because they show more of the neighborhood context, which I would think community boards interested in. So the, if you could show the next slide, Janine. Okay, so here's the area of of work and the, the project is a row house and it's under renovation right now on the interior. And we've been working since last um, March with DOT um, submissions and corrections. And recently we started working with the Public Design Commission. So the site is on the south side of 20, West 25th Street near the corner of 8th Avenue where there is a secondary subway, you know, the main subway um, entry point is at 23rd and 25th does have 
some subway egress on the corner. So you are on the east side of uh, 8th Avenue? Yes, the east side, uh, right where that pink dot is, where... So this is between 16... 8th and 7th? Yes, between 8th okay. and 7th, correct. Thank you. Next. Next slide. Okay, so here's the context of the house. It's the one with the white um, trim at the lintels, the white paint on the left. It's sort of one of two uh, sister building next to it that they both have tall fence around it and a tree that exists. The, that's how it existed when the client purchased the home uh, last August, so a little over a year and, year and a few months ago. So with the renovation, we helped them to renovate the interior. And then when we did the survey, we realized this tall fence was um, on public land. Um, so it's, an, it's not part of the property. Uh, we also noticed that historically, we did different historic research. And as you see the where this, the uh, door entry is, it's a double height space with a lintel above, and it appears that in the past there was a stoop here once. And so we started talking about how could we bring the stoop back to the home so that you could enter from the parlor and then have a separate entry to the garden apartment on the far left side. And if you look at the plans at the top, this gives you a little bit of the neighborhood context. You can see uh, to the, in red is where the, the home is, and that's the proposed stoop with a stair also going down to the cellar and a fence that um, uh, put, you know, puts it. Well, we're going to see it later, so don't. Okay, so that that is um, less of a projection than what the existing tall fence is in the bottom right corner. And then this block photo at the top is, is just good context because it shows you the the rhythm of the block and that there's a lot, there's a language of stoops and stairs to cellars and little fences, um, whether it's an apartment building or some of the row houses on the block on the south side. So next slide, please. And this is uh, the apartment uh, building that's to the east, 266 West 25th, 264 West 25th, they're together with separate entries. And, and then there's image three is looking down the street west towards the property. And you can see the lumber yard sign, which is right to the east of 278 West um, 25th Street. And then this is another series of row houses with stoops and fence that are just beyond 266 and 264 West 25th. Okay, if you don't mind the next slide. Janine, if you, oh, sorry, a little bit of lag time. Uh, so here's just further down the block, a little further east, where you see a um, more series of stoops, uh, stoops with fences and uh, area ways down to um, cellar basement areas. Okay, next slide. So here's the existing plan. I mentioned um, that there's an existing fence and you can see that the sister building on the right, which is to the west, also has the same fence. What we noticed um, when we started working with DOT because of the tree, uh, the tree bed and tree that exists there that the existing fence leaves less than five feet. So that's too tight for the public it's a pinch becomes a pinch point. So we wanted to remove the fence and work with a proposed stoop. If you could show the next page, a stoop that is uh, projects less than the, the existing tall fence, but still accomplishes getting stairs into the home at the parlor level and we sunk some of the stairs into the actual building to be able to make this work mathematically and then you can see we have on the left side stairs that go down into the separate garden apartment and there's a gate there 
and we worked with um, Public Design Commission to uh, make sure that the stoop and the stair are aligned and the fence with gates are again in alignment. And then from working with them on the public's perspective that they are in keeping with sort of the rhythm of fences and stoops on the block. And they also, it also allows for, a, it's a five foot hold from the tree bed to the start of the stoop. So there's more space now at this, um, in front of this property for the public right away. Next, please. And here's uh, an elevation on the left is the existing higher fence. And on the right is the new stoop with shorter fence and the entry to the basement apartment. Next slide, please. And here's just a close up of that view. And there's flower, um, flower um, boxes at the windows at the parlor. And um, we're bringing the windows down a little to what they were at um, so they're at the floor of the parlor level. Right now they're infilled with some siding in between the masonry facade. Next slide. This just shows a section. We worked with a structural engineer. On the left you're seeing, um, there's actually an old coal chute that we found when we were in the cellar. So we wanted to repair that with DOT and infill it, we had to submit a separate application to the vault department, even though it's it's not technically a vault, it's just a shoot, an old coal chute. But we wanted to take care of that and make sure that there wasn't any hollow space underneath the sidewalk. So that's what you're seeing on the left where it says coal chute. And then the you see just the section at the stairs and how it how it sinks into the home to get the last couple of steps in the entryway. Okay, next slide, please. This is um, part of the presentation. They ask for sort of a, a rendered elevation. So it shows the materials. We decided to match the, the sistering building on the right had gone through a renovation in the early 2000s and they have brown over their lintel, like a brownstone brown and uh, black around their windows. So we're, uh, we thought it aesthetically looked better to match what they had. And also we, we think that the, the stoop helps, um, you know, a stoop is traditional for New York City. And we think that this block, particularly the South side um, has lots of stoops. And we liked bringing that element back in to the neighborhood. And of course it also, the um, owners wanted it too. It, it gives a more elegant entry into the. Are you nearly done? We're yes. Now going in a lot of details which are not of our. Oh, know. okay. Sure. We then I'm, I'm done. The... I believe the rest of the slides are just, I think you received them this morning and they're just the DOT drawings. So if we could just flip through really fast, it's the same, uh, same information, but this was, this you're looking at right now was just presented. Uh, the requirements of DOT and the first component was what public design commission had us prepare. So I just wanted to show you everything, but this is simply a repeat of the first eight slides. Thank okay. you. And so the consent is for what? The consent is for the stoop and the stair to the cellar with the fence and there's two gates. To allow to use the sidewalk, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see uh, Dale has uh, his hand up. Okay. Mm. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And at some point, maybe when we're done, we'll just, we forgot to go around and, and um, introduce rec everybody. recognize all the members of the committee. I'm the co-chair. Uh, so um, thank you for the presentation, Julie. Uh, a question for you. So the existing fence is, uh, is on city property effectively, is that right? That's right, we discovered it. I mean, they, they purchased the home and it wasn't a topic, but on the survey, we saw that it is city property. So 
both so the neighboring in this in an instance like this is the 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 um continued uh the continuance of the fence like a grandfathered thing or do you are you obligated to remove it once you started renovations i think what i i ask a question similar to um nick at public design commission because i was wondering also for the neighbors because they're non-compliant i think it's only if someone is um filing complaints against it because most passerbys wouldn't realize that it's Right. So in effect, it's not like you're saying, well, we have to knock this fence down anyway, so we're going to do this. It's that we are actually replacing what we could presumably keep, this fence, this tall fence, which, and, and we're correcting the uh, slight, um, the slight lack of clearance space between the fence and the tree pit. Yes, correct. And that was the round conversation we've had with DOT. That was. All right. So, uh, Jeffrey. So, just to you there, thank you. And one of the images that I was hoping for a side by side, there's one that shows the um, side cut. What you're doing will create a five foot clearance between the new stoop and the tree pit. Correct. The current condition is less than five feet of clearance, correct? Correct. Okay. So <clears throat> it's like on the order of like 410 or something like that, or 49. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's maybe about four and a half inches of too tight. And and okay. the history looks like to me, those fences or tall fences were probably there from the 90s. I, we were trying to find old pictures. The tree's probably newer, but it is a thick tree. So I'm not sure exactly when it was planted. Um, but yeah. Okay, we got it. So the deficit is 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 okay, with, actually with, pain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm hearing that. Uh, I have a question, which is what? So why are those? Why are this change done? Is it cosmetic, or is it that the organization of the building inside is changing dramatically? Um, it, the organization inside. That's a good question. Um, the organization inside for the, the families going to live on the, the first and second, third floor, and uh, they wanted a rentable space on the garden level. Uh, because of the elevations, we couldn't, we could have proposed a stoop where maybe the tradition where you go underneath the stoop to enter the garden, but there's not that height. We're sort of on a slope and there's- But there is a door right now, right? There is a There's door a, outside. Yeah, there is a door now. Um, the history of the building, it, it, it is a two family house currently in the way past, I don't know in the when exactly, but the 1900s, it was a SRO. But what's, what? And I'm so sure. I think that they, they, over the years, the entry changed and it's, um, so they made it this informal entry where you go down and there's a lot of hallways and we were trying so today, to- Today, there are two, let me clarify that because I'm, I'm getting a little confused here. There are two entrances today, right? There is a door there's and a door. there is another door going under it, right? So there are two entrances today. And no, I'm sorry, there's not. There's one entry door right now and on the inside you have to, there's, there were so hallways. There is only one entry, entry door, that's the answer. There's only one entry door and okay. we're making two. So you are creating two. So yes. the, the second question is, how are you accommodating the ADA compliance on both of those doors? Oh, we don't, for single family, you you don't have to do ADA, I mean. What do you mean? You you don't have to, I mean, as a designer. Well, so it's not I single family because you're going to have three families, Well, right? single family and two family count the same. I've been working with DOB on brownstone renovations and they count it the same. You don't, you technically don't have to accommodate like you would in, of course, in a multi-housing building or a three family, you would have to have uh, ramps or means, but the way we design inside is you know for aging in place and comfort and we always like around doors we have the ADA but many of these of these buildings including the way it was configured before you have to go down steps when you open that door you go down 
five steps. So you don't go in and the, the, you don't go in and have a, you're on the same story. You have but, to. So I, I was under the impression that when you renovate a building, you have to be ADA compliant. And not, uh, not for single family. But you are going to have three different families living there, right? Two different families. It's a two family. three Because you mentioned three earlier. No, I didn't mention three. Okay. There's three and then, stories and the the family, yeah. it's a, a couple with two kids. They and have it, a it's still unfortunate. First, second, third. I got it. It's still unfortunate that people who may want to live in the second apartment cannot be, you know, the, ADA. The garden apartment downstairs. Right. It takes not, five it's steps. Not making it available if they want to rent to someone and doesn't make it available to people with ADA. So I personally, I, you know, that, that's a concern I have. Whether it's the law or not, this is a concern I have. Well, the clearances are there inside so that it's comfortable if someone, let's say it's not someone in a wheelchair. No, I heard you, obviously, but you can't okay. get to it. So, it's comfortable, but you can't get to it, right? Right, but, that, right. but even currently as it exists, there's stairs down when you walk into the front door, there's five stairs down. I know, but you're, we're not talking about currently, we're talking about... I think Christine's <laughs> trying to say that the this current project is a is an opportunity to cure what is current as you are curing the sidewalk clearance and recognizing that it's not required um, by code with a two family residence. Right. Um, yeah, again, so, yeah. Is, is okay. But I, just to clarify, so the elevation change that will be happening now outside with the stoops is ha currently happening inside. There are yes. internal stairs. And I, I recognize that your the large stoop is partially beyond the, the it's partially indoors. There's two steps indoors, I take it. Correct. Or two steps beyond the the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the lot line. Uh, yes. yes. Okay, Viren, sorry. Viren, right. Yeah, no, it's just quick, quick couple of questions. Have you already been to DOT or you haven't yet? Oh. You know what, we've been working with it. We had a pre-review in December, 2019, and then we've been working with them since March through the pandemic, like we've had 10 rounds with them. We also took it to the MTA because we're within 200 feet of a MTA. And then we took it to DOB and then back to DOT. We also had to do a vault application for the to fix the coal chute. And then they just introduced us to um, Public Design Commission. So okay. we, after all that, it's it's interesting because I work with landmarks a lot and we work with landmarks up front with the community board and landmarks. But in this case, it was sort of reversed. Like we spent a lot of time on all uh, with all these agencies and then we were introduced to Public Design Commission. We just changed things in the last two weeks to make it more aligned and, um, I think there are improvements for the public. I think they got it. I think they so, got it. So my, my second question is, do you have the permission to keep the fans? Because typically you may not be permitted if it is actually encroaching upon public sidewalk. So. The fence, we, we didn't, we applied for a renovation on the interior. We mm -hmm. didn't, um, we started talking to DOT right away and they said that we, you know, we knew that we had to talk to DOT to apply for the, the coal chute and the fence issue. And the fence wasn't compliant at the tree. So it started like a series of conversations with DOT. But so what's the answer? So the, yeah, the question that still remains, both DOB and DOT will have to approve you continuing the fans to encroach upon the public sidewalk. Have they approved it? Because this entire conversation might turn out to be moot point if they disapprove it. Disapprove it. Oh, well, we, we already have approval on the renovation. I think if I'm understanding your question, the building next door renovated in the 2000s, they added a floor, they made it a single family and they still have that illegal fence. So I think that DOB doesn't necessarily ask questions about the fence. Um, it's sort of the realm of 
It's there, so they assume no, it. The, I'm the, sorry, the, I don't think you're answering the question. Okay. <laughs> the question is about DOT and whether they will allow you to continue to use the funds. And, you know, it would be a good idea to go back and ask them. Yeah. You don't have to have an answer right away, but it would be a good idea to ask that. If, if they haven't asked you right now, they can even after construction starts. So you're really better off clarifying that with both DOB and DOT. Okay, David is next. You are on mute. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Well, thank you for your presentation. Oh, hold hold on. It was David Sonic. David. I Lopez. apologize. Right. I Sorry. Apologize. Um, yeah, it's DOT that would determine about whether the fence is allowed. But you know, as far as the ADA, um, I, I completely disagree that you know that they should be required to make this ADA accessible. The the, the exception for single and and two family homes is long long established. Um, there's no reason for us to go to go beyond that. Um, so, uh, and you know, and I, and my guess is it would be nearly impossible to do anyway. But, but you know, it's a brownstone with 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 stoop, and it's it's not it's not a multifamily project. And uh, no, it's not with stoop yet. Well, to get down, I assume that you have to go down those stairs to get to the lowest level, and. Anyway, I, regardless, regardless of whether it's possible, I don't think we should be requiring. Nobody was uh, nobody was suggesting a requirement. We were just putting it in the would be nice category. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think we are here to discuss transportation, right? So transportation. We're not here to discuss the design of the building. We're not here to discuss oh. DOB. We are not here to discuss any of that thing. So you know, from a transportation standpoint and an accessibility standpoint. I don't know the rule. I just, I just think that it's, it's bizarre. It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't apply. That's all. But in interior, this I was surprised this was on the agenda because this to me feels very land use. But when we look through the transportation lens, right. we are gaining three inches of the sidewalk. So I, um, I'm not suggesting a decision. I'm just sharing my concern. Got it. Okay, not, we have not written the resolution or anything like that. It's just that from a transportation that's actually, standpoint. That's actually a question in my mind, Jeffrey. I mean, I, I recognize the deficit currently exists, but as Viren pointed out, it is possible that it may not exist any longer if they are required to remove that fence or bring it back to the, to the clearance line. Right. So, I mean, it's, it would be nice to look at this and say, oh, it's win-win because they get their stoop and we get their, our clearance. But I'm not 100% sure that's actually the case. So we should raise that. David uh, Warren. Hi, I have a, a maybe would be nice question and that's regarding, and it's a little off topic, it's regarding the trash. If, where will the, if you could put the trash, maybe there's some programs coming about where maybe put the trash in the street or underground in the sidewalk, because the trash takes away walkway space from the uh, community. So I know this is not a law. This is a would be nice type thing. Just want to get your opinion or put it in your mind. She's, she's and, the architect. She's not the owner. Oh. Well, she's I, an architect. My opinion, actually, the owner's on here, but he has a, he found one of those, um, you know, there's that company that makes trash um, receptacles for residences and it would fit inside that fence area so he's been that's considering good. it um so uh, that's well, another pro to the fence good news. idea yeah so all right i don't see anybody with their hand raised from the public um so what's the general uh sense here i mean i think we can I, summarize it by jeffrey did you want to go ahead no go ahead dale and then i'll probably want to just comment and add something I think we can summarize it by saying, assuming that this plan corrects the current deficit in sidewalk clearance, we approve. Um, we can say that we, while we recognize that ADA compliance is not a requirement for this specific project, we would we would like to see going forward as many units as, as many rental units as possible be accessible for pe persons with disabilities. Yeah, sounds good. I agree entirely, but I think that 
your latter half is out of scope for transportation mm -hmm. to opine on. I think if this, if we were in Chelsea land use, they would have every right to opine on this. To me, it's a question of scope. Um, and the scope for us is the public right of way, which is the sidewalk. Um, we can always ask for more um, when it comes to transportation issues. I think it's squarely a land use matter if we're gonna start saying single family, you know, we should change long established ADA compliance for single and double family homes. Um, I mean, Jeffrey, that's a fair point. Yeah, and I, I agree. I agree completely with that. This is this is a, a total land use DOB issue. This is not a transportation issue. Well, with regard, other than the sidewalk, the sidewalk is, I think that it's fair. Yeah. The sidewalk is is transportation, and I appreciate Absolutely. we're taking it up in that regard. So we will stay in our lane and yeah. only discuss the clearance. <laughs> My, my recommendation is that we should get um, clarity about fans being retained yeah. uh, along right of way. Yes, that's and that is the first clarification that we need, and it comes pretty much from DOT. Yes, that is our our recommendation is subject to that not that information. Right, and the reason why I'm pointing that out is I'll tell you honestly, when you send in a, an application like this to DOT. More often than not, DOT doesn't check if you're actually encroaching upon right of way because they assume this is an existing condition, you're improving upon it, and therefore it might be okay. But it might still be caught at the DOB eventually. It, it's like it's like passively yeah. grandfathered, effectively. Exactly. Exactly. I think that clarification would be helpful to everybody, including the owner, including the owners, because it'll save a lot of time. Okay. But assume it, but if we just go down the assumption that like DOB or DOT says you got to remove that fence and bring it back to the clearance line, isn't that the line we're talking about? No. No. No, the line is the building. Yeah. The, depending the on fence. how much. For the fence. Mm -hmm. But you know, on the other hand, they are going to put the garbage into that area. So, you know, it's one way or another, that area is going to be lost. So not, I think necessary, I think not necessary, not um, necessary, Christine. No. no, if it is, if it, if the area way is not within your property zone, grandfather, then you're not allowed to keep your trash cans also. So if you remove the fans- Well, that doesn't can, help. Yes. <laughs> does that go for, Viren, does that go for a replacement fence or only if it's removed? No, no, you can replace the fans if, you're not encroaching upon pub, uh, upon the public way, and you have the permit from DOT. All right, if but DOT think, considers that to be a grandfathered condition and approves it. That is their call, and right. then they can do whatever they want to do. That's all I'm saying. I'm not right. saying this is. I'm not saying this is illegal. I'm not saying this is not acceptable. I'm not saying okay. the DOT okay. will disapprove. Darren, I I think to stick with uh, Jeffrey's guideline, which is we're doing transportation. Let's let's stick with that. I think the summary of, of Dale was pretty good, you know. But this, yeah. this, this is still yeah, a transportation yeah, issue. Oh, but we said we said we are going to do it. We're going to put a sentence in there, right? Yeah. Right. I would I would wrap what Dale's summary was into a motion for a letter. And I wonder if we can add the irony that this is called a revocable consent, and yet they are constructing a stoop. There's an irony to the permit that the city issues here that they would literally have to demolish a stoop. Well, yeah, that's a revocable content. I just think it's ironic because usually it relates to planters, movable infrastructure, not a, yeah. a built stoop. And, okay. Yeah. Je Je Jeffrey, the reason why they're saying it is because they're acknowledging the fact that it is actually going to encroach upon public right public way. way. Yes. So we have a saying. Right, so do we have a second on that? I second it. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Who is opposed? No, I think it was all uh, Rob present, Walker. Present, hold on. Present, not eligible. On okay, so this passes. Janine, you got the count? Um, yeah, just to double check. No, was anybody opposed? No. I don't no, okay. Think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, very good. All right, well, thank you, uh, Julie, and 
Jason, were you part of that? Thank you. Thank you. We'll we'll leave now. <laughs> yes, you can leave okay. now. Thank you. Thank the you. rest of the meeting yeah. promises to be exciting. Yeah. So <laughs> you're going to miss it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so what's the next one? This is uh, the next one is Open Streets for Open Street Street. on West Twenty Second Street. What do we have? The applicant is Melody Bryan. Yes, she's over. Why is why is this a question because the city is requiring partners? What? No, they're, they're actually this seeking- This is just to make somebody partner. coming and asking for a permanent or organization. Oh, okay. I just wanted to understand. I mean, I know Melody, obviously, but I just was curious of the angle we're looking at it from. Thanks. Okay, Melody, you, have, uh, you are uh, muted right now. We, we can't hear you either. Can't hear you. you have yeah, to increase the sound on your computer. No? You might have to unmute the microphone. Not only on Zoom, but on your computer. I, I wonder if the headphones are the problem. She's there. <sighs> yeah, How's that? Ah, oh. Is that better? Yes. It's a PC. I'm not used to PCs. But I can't hear you guys enough. Hold on, let me turn you up. Okay, excellent. Okay. Sorry about that. It's Murphy's Law. The floor is yours. Okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you very much for um, inviting me to present on West 22nd Street Open Street program. I'm a 30 year resident of the block, and I wanted my neighbors to be able to socially distance um, during the pandemic. Our sidewalks are narrow with trash and dog walkers and scaffolds, as are yours. Janine, my producer, is going to show me some pictures. Hopefully. Janine? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Just give me one second because they're all different lengths, so it's going to take a few, like, a few seconds in between each one. So bear with me. Okay. Yeah. We have trash, we have dog walkers, we have scaffolding. Um, I, can move you move it? Pictures, uh, Janine, to the right. Are you seeing the photos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah good, good enough. Good enough. So people were already walking on the street and an open street I thought would make it safer. Um, thanks to my local block association, this committee and the mayor, the program launched in April. Uh, Janine, you can, if you can find the other links uh, of people enjoying the street, yes. Um, so uh, people immediately took to it and began using the space. The block uh, became a drop off point for rebels. Uh, families came from other blocks to teach their kids to ride bikes. They thought the city was going to do this for all the blocks in Chelsea, and they were really disappointed to find out that you had to volunteer for it. Um, I tried but was unsuccessful to enlist the blocks west of me to join the Open Street program, but I was able to uh, facilitate um, a restaurant Open Street to the east of me, and it's going very well from on 6th Avenue. So originally I was the only volunteer uh, placing the barriers from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week because that's what I requested. Um, but I live in the middle of the block, so um, I needed help to get there faster if drivers left the barriers open. So I made a sign. Janine, you can show the sign if you want. There we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, so I made a sign, and that's when I found out how many people really love this open street. Neighbors pitch in all the time. Some of these are actually, um, uh, residents are actually turn out to be drivers who park on the street, but they like having a quiet uh, street that they can also walk on. Um, with the pandemic making it dangerous to petition, I created a QR code and linked it to a petition hosted by TA and put it on the barriers. So Janine, if you can find that, there it is. Um, 
within a month, there were 50, 50 signatures and more every day. So this is in terms of actually uh, reaching out. I've been late to the game, but um, I'm getting more signatures every day. And to boost, to boost the Blocks Open Street constituency, I created a social media campaign with people in my neighborhood. And so here are some of them, neighbors chiming in, yes. These are merchants, neighbors, dog walkers, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, so on a normal day, this block has up to five trucks for ongoing construction. Don't ask. This is the most insane street in the city, but there's always something going on. So as you can see, um, the difference now is that the workmen are getting their work done in peace and quiet, and uh, they don't have to run out, interrupt their work to move their truck for some impatient driver who has to go through. Uh, in fact, the truck drivers have actually been the most compliant about closing the barriers because they know it's in their best interest. Um, and here's the traffic that doesn't make it onto this block. Let's see if we can play a video. It's just a few seconds. There should be an arrow on the upper right. Uh, there's a little blue circle. So oh, okay, yeah, it's loading, it's loading. And that's just one light cycle, of course. So um, we're not likely to ever be a car-free street because there is a garage on the block, um, which I've learned also parks its overflow on the block itself. So we have a lot more double parking than we used to have. Um, but even with that, the street is more pedestrian and bike friendly. Uh, with winter coming and the surge coming, with more time spent indoors, I think it's even more important for people to have this open street to be able to walk on and, and socially distance safely. Thank you. Thanks, Janine, my producer. You're welcome. <laughs> so, yeah, so sorry. Dale, you are, go ahead. Um, so Melody, thank you for the presentation. Um, the, uh, as it stands, the open street program is set to expire. Are you asking or is that a question? I'm asking, I just wanna know the, I want you know, everybody it, to be aware of the terms. Right, right. So the terms change all the time. Uh, the petition is actually linked. The petition is actually linked to keeping it open after October 31st. So, um, and as you probably know, um, open streets came before restaurant open streets and the whole point was to socially distance. And then when the restaurant open streets came in, they became the priority. And for some reason we were linked to them when they were gonna close and then we were gonna close. So right now it's open-ended. Uh, we are, um, uh, there's actually a bill before the city council to make them permanent and expand them, but that is still in the works. It, you know, people haven't quite, it hasn't been raised yet. Um, so um, I wanna be ready for when that time comes. So it's an unknown end date at this point and you're yes, asking, you're, you're looking to make it permanent. I'm looking to make it permanent. And also um, I have to say uh, it's, among us open streets people, it's kind of uh, common knowledge that DOT will take your street away if you're not doing something with it. If yeah. they see you're not maintaining it and the barriers are not taken care of and they're not placed and, you know, so I just want to go on record as saying, you know, we have something that's really working here. It's I'm not going to be able to do programming, even with a special event. There's nothing I can do about the garage on the street. You know, I'm not going to be able to go much further than this, unfortunately, for now. Um, I'm still hoping that the blocks west of me will join in, but that's not happening just yet. Jeffrey? About the garage on the street, only because I'm curious about <clears throat> willingness and agreement. Was there objection? I mean, was did you talk to them at all? Just curious. I have not spoken to them um, when the pandemic first happened and they were, I know they were really hurting. They uh, were closed on the weekends. Um, they had a sign up saying, if you're using the garage, you can come into the street. You know, they were very, you know, trying to get people in, uh, which I understood it was fine. Um, the interesting thing about this garage is that it says uh, you can park your bike there, but you actually can't. They don't allow it. However, Amazon is there with all of these cargo bikes. Um, so that 
uh, I'm I'm just thinking that there may be a way to work with them, uh, you know, in in other areas. So I haven't spoken to them personally. I don't think they were big fans initially, but now they have so many cars, they're literally using the street as well. Well, bravo. Bravo, Thank you. yes. <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, David Warren. Hi, Melody. This is terrific what you've done. Thank you very much. I also signed your petition today when I saw it on Twitter. Um, you know, a, a little, one thing that it, it drives me crazy, and I saw it on street blogs, is on the Upper West Side, they tried the same thing. And like you were saying, if, if they don't maintain it. But I mean, they, they're having volunteers do this. That's almost like having volunteers shovel the snow of the street for the car storage. You know, this should be something that's maintained by DOT or the city agency. We pay taxes. I think it's great that you're doing it. But I think it sets in a set, it might be setting a bad precedent because you're relying on volunteers, you know, take that funding and take it away from, you know, other things. But I mean, like snow removal for cars, you know, they don't tell the cars, OK, you got to clean your own streets, take care of your own street. So no, you're preaching to the choir. But thank you for what you're doing. It's great. And um I don't see anyone in the attendees raising their hands. So, um, and Melody, are, are you in this discussion? Should we include the request for upgraded uh, materials for the for the gate? You know, I actually like the barriers that I have. Um, the police dropped off. Originally, I had a wooden barrier, which was really heavy. I used to have to get up at six thirty and do PT so that I could move it. Um, but now I don't, they, they dropped off some metal barriers and I cadged one from the DOT, which wasn't using it. Um, and then I found a couple of others when that one got destroyed by a car. Um, my only concern is if something happens with these, will they be cooperative in replacing them? I'm not sure. When okay. I spoke to the um, uh, uh, community relations guy uh, at the precinct, um, he said, well, we'll see what happens. It was very kind of Trumpian. So um, I don't know. That's my only concern is that yes. I can't get replacement because these things don't last forever. Jeffrey? I think that it's critical. We included in our letter that DOT a replace if needed and also that um, open street partners like this should be considered for um, other infrastructure as, this, as may become available by the city, a la a planter, uh, hopefully some type of standard barricade they're going to design um, yeah. because Scarlett would like that. And um, I just, it's, it's, we should be asking for that. All right. uh, that would be great. That would be great. I mean, I um, have, <laughs> oh, ear licking. Um, you know, I would love to have, uh, you know, Vision Zero uh, bulb outs and some real day daylighting on the corners. One one corner has a fire hydrant, so we're not going to be able to do much with that, but that's already daylighting automatically. So, you know, I'm all in favor of that. Varen, you were. Varen was. Yeah, and this is a quick question. I, mean, I, I, I definitely want to sort of uh, take, you know, we should all take this opportunity to kind of take over our streets. At the same time, are we asking DOT about only one street, street, or are we asking neighborhood wide sort of number of streets? That's my well. Question. I would I would say that first of all, we need to ask for the streets that work, mm -hmm. because if you ask for streets that do not work, it's a non-starter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are streets where it doesn't work, it didn't work, it failed. And, you know, bringing that back, I think I would like to focus on the one that worked and say, okay, those work, let's keep, make them permanent. And then let's figure what we, else we need to do in order to make the other one work. Because if we start with, we want everything, they are just going to say, look, half of them didn't work. So let's, let's focus on the one in my mind, let's focus on the one that worked. I know, but the question is, have we done that kind of sort of, uh... Um, overview of streets that don't work or the streets that work, have we done that? Because we're talking about a community, right? I mean, it's not just one block and one street. And West 22nd Street works, and I'll tell you why, because I'm on 20th Street, and some of the folks on 20th Street, well, I've, I've, you know, we sort of blocked off because of the police precinct. 
So it has kind of de facto become an open street. But I found out that West 22nd is actually selected because NYPD would like that. So there's a kind of subtext to the whole conversation. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I can't deal with that. Uh, let, let me say, we had, I had a discussion with um, uh, Jesse and, and <laughs> Janine about the whole, this whole, dis whether we should really review everything and, uh, you know, make a recommendation for everything. And my observation was, you know, when a street says, I want to change direction, we don't invite all the street and say, is everybody want to change direction? <laughs> or, you know, and, and then when one street say, I want a loading zone for parking, we don't invite everybody and say, is it working? What's working? What's not working? But also I want to say that each street has a very different story. So you go to 44th street, at the end of the day, they didn't want to do it. You go to 45th street, they thought they wanted to do it and they didn't want to do it. 51st Street. Christine, I'm asking this question only because it ties back into the equitable streets conversation that we want to begin to have. So, you know, if we are going to make um, one case example, to sort of point out other possibilities, I'm all for it. Right. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, Telling you what? No, because the issue is much larger. It's not about loading and unloading sort of base, uh, because that's a very specific condition that you know not it has. But people wanting to walk and want to occupy streets for variety of reasons and social distancing is such a common cause. Right. But you know, I think we need to open up that conversation. That's what I'm. Thinking. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm very shy right now about that because we were all down the hole in four or five months ago when it seemed like it was a no-brainer, right? And the, what, what happened is that at the end of the day, very few streets worked, even though we asked for a lot. And, and it seems that we have a big disconnect between, you know, and especially the issue is, is opening, I mean, many opening and closing the street and, and I think we need to find a solution to that before we go and try to go across the board and expand on that. It seems that there is a big issue there. And, you know, we testify on that. Uh, that was one or two months ago. So I mean, I think, but I, the, the point I'm making is that we have to keep hammering it. So yeah, know, yeah, no, I get I mean, it. I think, we can, I think we can support this, this specific block and also, you know, develop right. some language to say we would we would we 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 would love to encourage this block to continue in its success with an open street so that others may follow suit to that to, to that degree as a model um because i agree with you viren it is it, it it should be larger but you know the i i don't want to say that the program was sabotaged from the outset although that is a dynamic we see a lot with city programs that when there's like contested like conflict, they sort of say, well, we'll, we'll just make, we'll make them do this and none of them will actually get it done and then we'll kill open streets. Right. I'm not saying that's what actually happened, <laughs> but it's possible. Uh, but you know, the, 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 the hoops that everybody had to, to leap through to get an open street running and, and, and uh, functional were, uh, were fairly high during a pandemic. So, um, I, you know, I would say we can develop some language in the letter in our resolution that addresses your concerns. Um, I think we need, we need to repeat again that, you know, the, uh, how the streets are open and closed or, or you know, is, is an issue and they need to address yeah. that. And also, I think, can I I think it's, also an sorry, no. it's also an opportunity to sort of claim at least one of the parking lanes for other streets, even if they can't become open streets. Oh, now if you open the parking lane, now you are losing everybody. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I agree. Can I, we can are I ask Melody, the, the, the thing is that, you know, you, you want to, when you actually want to support something at the same time, two, two more things being added to that list might not hurt because I think it just makes a larger point that we really want to reclaim part of the street, which should be reclaimed because there is actually a problem. You know, we have, we're talking about a well, gap between well, we, tube and a fence. We agree, Viren, we agree. I just, I just think that right, right now, 
and I think Dale had a very good suggestion, which says, you know, we want that to remain because it has been a big success in our neighborhood, right? Uh, we want to make sure that DOT is going to stand around and support the barriers and replace them, etc. And we want to make sure they are going to continue to work to make the model work for more streets, right? And what other things are they going to do to, to work for more streets, which is less people intensive, like when, and everybody doesn't have a melody, right? <laughs> this is, this and it's is, only one block. I mean, West End Avenue what? is a huge boulevard. It's even huge. bigger than 34th Avenue, right. you know, without right. the median. So yes. that's a huge lift. So these are, these are huge lifts and they need to, you know, I think they put their foot in the door and now we need to open that door a little further as, yeah. as you are suggesting Vera, and in our recommendation. So, I mean, I'm just trying to get this confused. So what you're saying is at some point DOT or some city agency will maintain it also, because like you said earlier, uh, not everyone has a melody in that block. I'm not, I'm not saying so that, but if you future, go- If, if you they go rely to, on volunteers, that's a bad precedent. No, but if you, if you go to like the Union Square right now, which is a shared street, there is nobody at the entrance. Right, and there is no barrier that you have open to open and close. So, you know, we need to have stronger signage. We need to make it look more official, right? It needs to say no to the cars you can't get in. And then there may need to have a, a, a chicane or something like that at the entrance so that the cars really know they can't enter and it make it difficult for that. And those standards are not developed yet, but I think we should advocate for them. I mean, in effect, there's a chicane with the with the different uh, pieces of the barrier fencing, right? Because they're kind of staggered out. And but, yeah, but we, oh, I do have trucks that have to come through. I mean, that's right. just a fact. They do have to be removed. Right. But I had a question about, I don't think it's the case, but I just want to double check. You don't have a turn lane, a designated turn lane onto your block, do you? No, no. Okay. Um, just, I'm going to just bookmark this for future reference. I think there is a block that is an open street that has a... It was um, the 17th street. Yes. Uh, maybe right. 26. That no, has, 17th street had the turn lane, right? Yeah, I, I like the idea of also having like signage at the turn lane onto an open street that says, you know, this, this, this street. But that's what Jeffrey did. He closed the turn right. lane. Right. What about having a swing gate so they wouldn't have to lift up the gate and it would just open, the car would open, and then someone just has to, sh it, sh it shuts the gate. I'm not talking about a large gate, but like, I don't know what you call it, like thin, you know, they have them in different like places. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, FIT I, has something like that. Yeah, maybe like that. I mean. as guard. So I, I don't know that we can design the whole thing. Let's, let's. No, but we can give a concept. Let's agree that, you know, the resolution it maybe is about, maybe somebody summarized the resolution. It's about, do I see anybody who opposes uh, doing the, uh, the, the open street permanent? Everybody's in fa favor. So this is a matter of crafting a resolution that says we're in favor, we applaud, it's very, you know, people intensive. We need uh, we we need better solutions, and we certainly need better, more official markings and more official uh, signals that tells the drivers not to go through. You know. Okay. Somebody makes a, res a resolution with that. <laughs> I'll make that resolution and add. Um, the idea would be like FIT swing gate. Doesn't mean they have to do it, but that would be the concept. But I, that's, I make a friendly amendment to your thing and I make the resolution. Okay, we can check in. Make it. Uh, we can, can I suggest example. that the angle be like a pr suggestion to DOT in terms of developing permanent infrastructure and, and, and elements for the open streets program. Exactly. And signage, Jeffrey, and signage. And, and signage. And, and official signage. Because Absolutely, because no right turn and no entry. These are the two things you need. Yeah. As much as I like your back. sign, Melody. <laughs> yeah, they have- I'm not an artist. 
saying no entry in that in that street, you know, whatever. And, and cobblestone. Right. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> let's make it very expensive. Just kidding. Well, well you had it. <laughs> so who is uh, somebody? Uh, so we have a motion. I'm not supposed to do that, but do we have a motion? Yeah. Made that motion. Second. Good. Yes. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. And Melody, bravo, bravo for doing it. Tremendous. There, there, there should be an Open Streets Award for you. Yeah. Um, That's a 34th Avenue and the Avenue D get street. the Open Streets Award. <laughs> the renaming of the street, the Melody Streets. Melody Way. <laughs> Melody Way. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Okay. I'll be jumping <laughs> off in a few minutes. Okay. But we're on to helicopters where I also have a lot to say. Oh, she's on the helicopter way. Yeah. So 30th Street in the part at Hudson River Park to, so that everybody remember last month we sent two letters, I think, one to the governors of both of our states saying, you know, we have so many flights and it's unbearable. We know that uh, Gail Brewer has been working on that and maybe in fact in the attendees we have Brian, Brian Lewis, do you want do you want to give us an update on that? Do you want to bring Brian in, Janine? I'm transferring, he should be on soon. Yeah. Hi everybody. Uh, yeah. uh, so I don't have much in the way of specific details beyond that we are uh, trying to get in contact with uh, New Jersey officials. Um, we're also continuing to uh, talk with the FAA about it. Um, we will be resuming our helicopter task force. We don't have uh, details about uh, you know, what time or day, but uh, we are going to be resuming that. Uh, but okay. at this point, yeah, it's basically making sure that we have all the stakeholders ready to uh, resume talks in, in mm -hmm. these uh, um, uh, task force meetings. And then the other uh, person I just moved in is the co-chair of Quality of Life, Alan Oster, who has uh, been working on that. And I wanted Alan to tell us what he thinks we should be, how we can help at transportation. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. I wasn't expecting to be, to be called in, but uh, it's, it's it, you know what, it it's more of a federal problem. It's more of our um, congressional, um, representatives to get involved. Uh, these are FAA flight patterns that the tourist helicopters from Jersey are using as opposed to the New York City uh, mandated um, uh, flight patterns that the east side and the downtown um, heliports are using, uh, which do not cross over uh, Midtown. Not to say that they don't, but they're, they're different flight patterns. So we, you, we need to get our uh, congressional people on track. I don't think you're gonna get anything out of FAA until the administration changes next year. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but I think they need, they need to get on it uh, in terms of um, getting the New Jersey uh, tourist helicopters. Uh, I, understand. I understand that Nather has a bill in the works. Yeah, that's what we yeah, No, he has a bill in the works. We that letter to him yeah, yeah. Last, I mean, last month. Yeah, I don't um, think, I, personally, I don't think anything is really going to change that much until, until January. Um, yeah. New administration takes place. But they, um, they have to keep the pressure on. You know. So, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Did you raise your hand? You wanted to talk? Oh, this was earlier. Um, we kind of okay. moved on from the past. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, if there is, in fact, post city council legislation, we should, like, if if we could just like send a letter, or just actually like push our council member to endorse it. We did. I don't that know if Melody saw We on. did that last month. Yeah, okay. but I, I mean, if there's no follow up, yeah. Yeah. I think the issue with the heliport, and as concerned you know, if we're gonna stay in our lane as transportation yeah. is that um, the heliport, it, the 30th Street heliport provides transit to and from airports mostly and some private charter flights to far flung places like the Hamptons or Newport. And um, it is, um, 
like when they when they land and and maybe Melody can speak to this a little bit when they land uh, when they come in to the to the to land at 30th Street sometimes they have to like based on the winds they have to make some maneuvers that seems to either um, endanger or or otherwise like interfere with the the quiet enjoyment of the park that's you know that it's in so I think there was at some point a suggestion that the heliport not be at 30th street Jeffrey has some yeah I'm going to get Jeffrey to come so you, yeah. you're you're done Dale Jeffrey The heliport was supposed to close and move, um, you know, when the Hudson River Park Act was signed. Yeah. Uh, we have two, I see it as two problems. Um, and actually the trust is part, the Hudson River Park Trust is part of the problem in the sense that the, the heliport is a tenant mm -hmm. and the trust needs money. And I cannot fault them for needing money. It's their revenue stream. Their tenants are their key revenue stream. And so how can we break the lock between the trust needing the revenue of the heliport, which which actually pays a market rent, as opposed to many tenants that actually, uh, the way you look at it, kind of do not. Um, recognizing that, Dale, there is no quiet enjoyment of the park uh, in that area of the park because of the highway and also the, the heliport itself. There were proposals a number of years ago to actually put the heliport um, 100 yards, 500 yards, I forget what it was, into the river actually, and the helicopters would be landing in the river, and then the passengers would be um, shuttled on a boat to um, shore. I actually think that could work, but it could complicate Coast Guard waterway issues. Um, second from that, I think that what Melody's neighborhood, and I, she keeps being called out in particular just because we know where she lives, I think it's had a lot more to do with NYPD helicopters in the past several months and news helicopters in the past several months then just, hold on, I'll acknowledge that in a second, then just um, Blade and the private charters um, from 30th in the river. Um, so we have a double-edged sword. I want the park to have revenue um, to do park things. The problem is one of their tenants is a not appropriate park tenant. Um, hey, Jeffrey, I have a question. I have a question before you we go. Uh, the lease of the of the heliport. When is the renewal date? I will try to find it right now, and come okay. back. I'll come back to you because that that would be a time where we have leverage, right? Where the issue? Where, I mean, there were the court cases, right? There were numerous court cases about the heliports, um, and then there were stays on the court cases and. A lot of the work got consolidated to Wall Street or the, um, what is it, 33rd Street on the east side. Um, and there I was- I think it's important from, a, from the standpoint of what you're talking about is revenue of the park. The fundamental point is where is, you know, when is the renewal? If there yeah. is no renewal for 30 years, right? Then, I mean, we don't then, have any leverage. Then it's moved and don't have leverage there, yeah. Right. If we have a renewal in five years or in 10 years, we need, we need to start to line up stuff yeah. to do so that, you know, options, et cetera, and say, okay, are we, you know, you need to get, you, we need to tell them to get ready for that and put them on notice that possibly there is not going to be a renewal. And then, then we have the discussion with the governor about the money, right? Yeah, Christine? Yeah. Christine, um, Jeffrey, you, you may want to check uh, in in uh, in your computer right now. There was an amendment to the uh, to the act a couple of years ago that I think Godfrey uh, submitted, which gave the uh, heliport um, renewable forever, just about. So that should be, you, you should be able to access that um, pretty quickly. Uh, but a couple of, a couple of issues with the heliport, um, the 30th Street helicopters. Um, from my experience, do not fly over Midtown. They either come from Jersey from the oh, airport or they go up and down the river. So they're not really affecting Midtown. The issue that Dale brought up in terms of landing is a, is a good question because um, over the past year and a half, I've been tracking um, the incoming flights, the idling times uh, that I submitted uh, 
a long time ago uh, to, um, I think to, to our parks committee at some point and also to the trust. So you have um, guidelines, I'm sure from the FAA, uh, how you're supposed to approach a landing area. And you also have guidelines from the FAA as to how long you're permitted to idle on the tarmac um, there. And um, over the years um, that I've been tracking them, you have helicopters that sit there for five minutes. And you have helicopters that I live for 20 minutes. And prior to the pandemic, you could have three or four helicopters on both sides of the trailer uh, idling there for 10, 20 minutes. Also, you have helicopters that come in at a 30 degree angle as opposed to come in, coming in at a 90 degree angle, you know, straight into the, uh, and, it, and it doesn't really affect that much by the, the wind um, occurring because they just do it all the time. And, you know, you have all this um, surf coming up over the uh, walkways. So but, Alan, so isn't a, lot, it a lot of times this, this is helicopters giving people a little bit of a show. Uh, they go over um, um, pier, pier 66, the frying pan. Uh, so it's kind of a game a, a lot of times um, that, that's going on with, the, with these things. So I think the first thing what we probably want to do, I don't know if it's transportation or if it's WPE, uh, we need to know what the guidelines are. What are they supposed to be doing? Uh, the other issue is a safety issue with the heliport because you've got cars coming in Prior to the pandemic, you had cars coming in, in and out, in and out into the parking area uh, to a point where on our suggestion, um, the trust went and um, um, asked them to put a flag person, uh, which they did uh, for quite a while. So, um, you know, there, there's a number of safety issues. There's, a, there's an eight to 10,000 gallon fuel tank that sits at the southern end of the heliport um, that the gate is um, basically um, secured with a um, with a padlock. So um, hope no, you know. So th there there are, there are issues in there that somehow just you know just don't get addressed. Don't you know? Nobody's up out there looking at. It. Back last year when we had um, the UN in session, there were t there were um, TA agents, there were government agents. There were uh, people checking cars coming in and out. For who? For um, an occasional um, delegate, um, delegate that would come in by helicopter. So, if that's good enough for them, why aren't they checking cars coming in and out for um, for the people that use the park every day? So, there's a lot of issues with the heliport. It seems that the east side and the west side heliports. Uh, provide, because they're run by the city, basically, they provide more information. You can you 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 know right away how many flights are coming in and out, where the flights are coming from. Uh, so the heliport basically, Blade is running its own operation, seems to me, uh, without any real scrutiny or um, or oversight. Alan, I think that's I think that's really helpful information for us as Transpo to frame our letter as you know like looking at the heliport as a transportation asset and saying it is deficient in the as a transportation asset it is deficient in the following ways and you know basically what you just outlined as far as like operating safely and operating within standards and we can look to we can look to try to find those standards but i think that's our i mean we can do something jointly but i think that's our tack as the transportation planning committee which is to say like you are a transportation asset in our community and you are failing our community in the following ways dale i'll give, I'll give you another one if i may interrupt yeah um, since the city does consider this part of the whole transportation network why aren't they paying taxes to go to um, the subway system and the mass transit? Like they're, they're taxing taxi cabs. Right. Isn't, there, isn't there a tax on, on taxi cabs now? They, they passed well, last year open, sometime? Okay, but now we're opening like a big can of worms because it opens to the other, uh, you know, the other uh, heliports. So I think, I think it would be probably better to just narrow it down to just, the issues, operational issues, what Dale was saying, 
That's oh, a no, I'm, we, I'm just I, I'm just throwing it out as an as another as another no, I, cushion. I totally appreciate that point, but I think our purview is going to be like you are a deficient operator. Right. Jeffrey, mm -hmm. what did you find? Only the the uh, the cost, not the term yet. I'm still looking. Right. But just to um, on Alan's point, there is it's the tourism flights, and I kind of have an issue with Blade. But at the same time, they're they're actually not tourism. That's actually in a it's a transportation use. As much as I think it's a superfluous and and um, luxurious one, um, it's the tourism flights that are the problem. But it's not. There is no tourism flight on this uh, heliport. So which, which is why it, it's almost that 33 heliport isn't the issue. The issue is that tourism flights can pretty much do what they want uh, based on those FAA guidelines. You well, mean the one coming that... from New Jersey. We're not talking about the one coming but from that's New Jersey. That's a separate, that's we a heard... separate issue, right? We're just talking about who is landing and who is taking off from the, the, the 30th Street. You know, uh, uh, Basically, we're mad at all the helicopters. Yes, <laughs> and we've already addressed the the tourist flights with last month. Is, is there a way to get an e like a safety EIS study here and have it become illegal to operate a helicopter in an area so close to the Greenway, the highway? You know, there's is there is there a way we can throw a wrench, a very technical wrench? In terms of secra or some kind of review to find a way to actually Jeffrey, block this. Right. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, just wait one very quick point to that. I think the uh, EIS uh, is a very good point. There is an environmental issue with the heliport and the noise. It actually is very, very, very bad. And Hudson River Park Trust knows this. It's very bad for the sea life below and the fish they're trying to actually breed along Hudson River. And the oyster bay parks. I mean, oyster bays and every, all those sort of cool things that they're trying to do. So there is a larger point. I think we will. We would probably have much better success if there's a joint letter between transportation and water park, waterfront and parks committee, and bring these environmental issues into play as well. So what should we do? Should we let Waterfront and Park uh, discuss that first and then join them into a letter? Or should we have just a letter here, which is pure transportation saying, this is not a good operator. And, and, and what Dale said, you know, that same enumeration of things and keep it that way. And then once, uh, once the, the, the waterfront looks at it from an EIS standpoint, but then, you know, waterfront is going to have the same issue that Jeffrey was talking about, which is they want the money and they want it gone. It's a, it's, and it's a considerable revenue stream. Yeah. For the so park. My, my question back is like, we need to get to know when we are going to have, I mean, I think Alan's point was good. So should we understand from the lease, what are the, the guidelines of the uh, operation, right? They are steps, they are stipulation. And second, should we understand when is the, uh, the next anniversary of the lease or whatever? And I think if we have that, then we can have a bigger discussion. But right now, could, we could have just an operational letter which says these things are not good, right? The only issue being that there's multiple operators at that, at the 30th Street terminal. No, but there, there, there is only one lessee. So the, the people who it lease, would go to the, it would go to who's leasing this? The, the Air, Air the Pegasus the is the leaseholder, and then they have a bunch of subtenants. Right, I'm but sorry, the leaseholder is the people that? that get it. I have the names. Okay. Can you just tell me again, just so I can put in my note, what's the name? Air of Pegasus. Okay. Yeah, but the name of the people who are own the, the thing, they are in the press, you can find them. Varen, did you raise your hand again? Yeah, no, I just want to say that this is also a quality of life issue in a major, major significant way, not yeah. only for the humans. And we, we, and we can keep talking about 
or avenue for a sustainable park trust, but there might be other ways of uh, sort of channeling that and, or, or finding ways so that they can, we are not saying that just stop this operation tomorrow, but find ways to sort of displace them and then place something else that actually can help you generate revenue. NYPD Two Pound is going to hopefully come back to a uh, sustainable park trust, and that would uh, actually help them uh, generate more revenue as well. Maybe that's where we could put the Eddie Port. <laughs> also, you know, um, I wonder if I could go on top of a related some, building. Some, <laughs> well, I, I have another proposal. Uh, Jacob J Javits Convention Center roof. There is no, oh yeah, right. Yeah. You know, they might uh, be some David, federal... David has been waiting, yeah, David I had my hand up for like 20 minutes. Yes. Um, there might be some federal regulations dealing with the wildlife and the sea. And you know, once Trump is out- That's what Viren do... said. No, no, but I'm saying, so what we could do is send a letter to, to both US senators and to our Congress people to make sure that's enforced. By the time that that happens, uh, uh, Biden will be inaugurated, and then they can handle it that way. So they, you know, this takes a long time. That's how they got rid of the West Side Highway well, based on some fish. We were suggesting that it should go to the uh, to the Parks Committee to discuss those things because we are not the expert. It's not a transportation issue. West Side Highway fell down. <laughs> it wasn't a fish. No, but I mean, they, they were going to yeah. rebuild it again and they got denied. Yeah. And it was because of. of okay, the, so uh, do we have. I'm going to put it underground. It was going to be underground. <laughs> so, Dale, you made a, a, a very good summary of, of three items, right? It was flight patterns, this was um, the air, air quality, and the I, security. I think we're going to address a letter to Pegasus, to the lessee, and also highlight the fact that they have subtenants who are yeah. operating outside the bounds of um, you know safe and and uh, and um, and uh, unobtrusive operations and that they're deficient in the following ways there have been reports in the sense of hovering or flybys and also the conflict with driver drop-offs or pickups and also the noise issue and say, you know, we as the Transportation Planning Committee, uh, committee ask you to correct these deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, do we have a motion? Somebody vote for that? So moved. Okay. Sec we have a second, yes. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Present, non eligible? Done. Who commutes by helicopter? <laughs> okay. By the way, the FDNY is very quickly. jealous because we're trying to Hold get on. a helicopter and the cops have so many, we have none. Do we have anybody who wants to talk as a new business in the attendees? Can you raise your hand? No, nobody is raising their hand. I okay. I don't see um yeah I don't see the, no, the, not. the one who was struck yes um okay do we want to have a motion to uh, adjourn can I just uh, send my new business to put on our radar for the future we talked about this last month but I really would like the committee to think a bit more comprehensively about the Pier seventy nine. Um, ferry terminal and the MTA uh, M42 terminus site and thinking about do we want to recommend consolidation um, in the interest of creating more park space actually um, or how do we want to I, I would like the committee to, to think this through I don't know who the appropriate guest would be to talk about it or guests plural but I do think it could be a good use of um, our recommendation given the improvements to the M42 the increase in ferry service, we will one day anticipate at 79. And, you know, I think many of our preferences to eliminate or dissolve the waterway uh, shuttle system in favor of folding it into public transit. Okay. I mean, is, is that, would we, would we have somebody here from DOT or MTA? I think we first have to have people from the trust because we need to understand what's happening there, yeah. right? Don't we? 
and how I guess those two terminals, which are just sort of a block of terminals, I say loosely, a block apart, how they work. And now what's what's going on between them and what is the open space and you know what's what's the space occupied by what? And it's all on on parks on the trust space. Most of it. I don't think all of it is, but I think you know a lot of it is. Right. Right. A lot of it is. We'd have to have the state DOT. So I think it's multiple guests. It sounds like it would be the trust. We would need um, city DOT. Uh, EDP has jurisdiction on, on that pier. State DOT too. Yeah, I mean, we're, it, it, the list would be long. So I wonder, it's horrible. Yeah, I agree. But there's something to be said for consolidating that and finding a way to eliminate a redundancy in service there. And it would improve the conditions for access to the park for pedestrians. It would improve the safety of the Greenway. Um, well, and especially with the context of Pier 76 also changing of use. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now you have a whole context here, which is not the same anymore. Right. You need to figure how this whole thing is going to work. I mean, another question is, and this was brought up at a Hudson River Park Advisory Council meeting, was a request to do an entire study to redo Route 9A, um, yeah. you know, from, mm -hmm. from the battery to, the uses have changed from the 80s. And I know you laugh at that, Christine. No, um, no, I'm not laughing. I think, I think <laughs> you're right. I'm just. Je Je Jeffrey, Jeffrey, uh, one, of, one of my studio, that uh, Urban Design Studio at G5, we actually talked about potentially in next 50 years time uh, that um, highway is going to become a parkland uh, with, 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 with automated vehicles sort of quietly moving up and down. So there are a lot of ideas, yes, and I'm, I'm not going to be around to see that, but you know, that's where conversations are actually going. Um, just one quick thing that I wanted to uh, let the committee know, my students currently are looking at PS76 redesign, actually, and Hudson River, River Park Trust came and made multiple presentations. And I think we should invite them to this committee for a presentation so that we understand how they are looking at these three different conditions that Jeffrey just described, the two ferry terminals and Pier 76. Right. Uh, I, I, well, you know, I called uh, uh, Noreen the other day and said, Noreen, when you change Pier 76, the access is going to be different. And it's going to be very, very important that we understand how it goes. And she was pretty, um, she was uh, a little bit, defensive. I, let me just let me just say Alan's there is on the line. The, the, the governor is very interested in making changes at Pier 76. There is no commitment whatsoever to any money or any actual timeline. So right. it's great we're getting all the attention and all the press, but there's no money <laughs> and there needs to be a lot of money to take down the pier shed. The tow pound is going to take a year plus to move once we even have a site. It's my understanding we're we may be getting an update from the NYPD in December mm -hmm. at Health Kitchen Land Use about tow pound relocation. Mm -hmm. So there's there's ideas, but nothing is concrete right now, and there's no money. That's the problem. Has, which, which uh, is the has Parks, Sorry, has uh, Parks had a presentation? I'm Parks curious. had a presentation last week about the idea of when the pier shed comes down. Um, interim uses and just understanding what interim means. Um, the two concerns were, we don't want a sacred cow a la Pier 40 and soccer fields that are too beloved to ever have any changes happen um, to the pier, which is exactly what's happened down there. Um, and then a real commitment to ensuring that interim use is flexible and also understanding that any process towards the permanent park goes through the standard process that we always have had to develop a pier, a la Pier, 70, uh, pier 97, um, up in Hell's Kitchen and 64 okay. and 84 and all that. Okay, so it wasn't a concrete plan presented. It was, yeah, okay. Paint. 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 But still, yeah. I'm, I'm concerned from a transportation standpoint because even if we have paint, you are going to have more people coming right, instead of cars. And so, so we just need to understand how that works because this area is horrible. We know it's horrible. Do you think that we, once there's an understanding of what the interim use looks like, then it's 
then we get to transportation gets to say, well, if you're going to have a track and you're going to have a kid's playground, you know, whatever you're going to have, right. this means this. And so we have to suggest that. Right. That's that's what I told her. And I said, you know, we better think about it. I said, you, you really need to think about it. You know, where is your entrance going to be? Yeah. But is it is it close to the the, the, the buses? Is it close to the other thing? I mean, this place is not designed for people. And so once you in, in in you know inject a people use there, where are they crossing the highway? Yeah. You know, 38, you cross the highway, you go nowhere, right? Yeah. So you are going to have to funnel people, even if it's with cones or something like that. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you have to think about it. It's I not think it's remarkable we actually are having the conversations on this scale for the first time. And right. So I think I think maybe Jeffrey, your idea of saying, okay, let's have a, a, a global discussion from Pier 76 to 42nd Street for this whole area, at least from a transportation standpoint. And, and say what's going the on. only thing is I think that there's the 79 should come sooner than 76 because there's direct encouragement we can make as it relates to the ferry shuttles and the M42 consolidation in terms of sites. So no, granted, granted. I just don't, don't want know. to. Yeah. I don't want we to just, preclude anything that should be done later. You know. True. We just don't know what the. Yeah. The, the 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 interim use and then the development at 76 might look like because. 76, technically, as the law is written, up to a maximum of half. However, one of the proposals is for, you know, 20% development, 80% park space. So there's, you know, there's, there's multiple ways that um, I think it's going to be looked at. But no question, transportation is going to have to be considered because of the use change. The massive use change. In a, for the better, right. provided it's comprehensive. Yeah. Okay. Ready to go? Most I mean, let's tear that bed down. <laughs> wow. That was Guys, a big one at the you, end. I sent you an invite for my studio's presentation next month. If you guys want to join, I will say, share the link. Yes, please. Yeah, it's going to be online. Some fun ideas. Students have looked at PS76 in a very unique way. You're going to be Good. falling Good. off your chairs, but it's it, fun. The pier is huge, and it will be... It's, it's incredible how much space that will eventually be. I think we should have a tropical forest. We yeah. could, it's that That's big. It. <laughs> it's it's a tropical a city forest block. and people go and hiking in there. Yeah, Christine, just, through, just so you understand the scale, it's one and a half times a typical city block. I know, it's enormous. Yep. All of that for cars, hey. Ugh. Okay, I'm calling uh, the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Janine, you have everything you need for votes, etc. Yep, got everything. Thank you. Okay. Have a good holiday, everyone. Okay, thank have you. Have a good holiday, everyone. Thank you. Transportation, another, good, transportation thank you, another great meeting. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Alan. Yeah, thank you for coming. My pleasure.